My name is Tracy Wooden. I'm the horticultural agent for the University of Delaware down in Sussex County in Georgetown. And I'm Carrie Murphy, the horticulture agent in Newcastle County with the University of Delaware Cooperative Extension. Yes. Carrie and I are here on the campus of the University of Delaware at the College of Agricultural and Natural Resources. And we wanted to just talk a few minutes about why it's so important to take a soil test. Soil test kits are available at each of the county offices across the state and are only $10. It's important to take a soil test because you need to be able to support healthy plant growth and healthy soil does that. A soil test kit includes a bag to collect your soil, a brochure that explains how to take the soil test, and a form in which you need to fill out and explain what you're growing, how you're growing it, and just provide some personal information that'll help to get you your soil test results in a quick way. In our county extension office, we have a lot of new homeowners that come in and they really don't know their landscape. The first thing that I suggest is a soil test. Front yard might be different from the backyard. Side yard might be different from the front and the back. You really don't know what you're inheriting. Let's say you wanna start a vegetable garden or you have beds, garden beds that have ornamental plants. It's not necessarily that you have a problem in those beds, but it's important for you to know what's going on in your soil so that you can continue to support healthy plant growth regardless of where it is. So if you're in the front lawn, you're gonna need a soil test kit to test the front lawn because it might be different than what's happening in your backyard and the lawn that's growing in the back, which would require another soil test kit, each of which is $10. If it gets too pricey for you, what you can do is rotate. Maybe this year you, you test the uh, front lawn, next year you test the back lawn, and maybe the following year you start your vegetable garden and you test that. Soil health is extremely important to supporting healthy plant growth. Take a soil test approximately every three years to reassess the soil, or if you're starting a new project, or if you've got a specific problem that needs to be addressed. Yeah. Carrie, soil testing you know, is, is really very reasonable and it's a great way to save money in the long run. It's just $10 and you can find a soil test kit that we'd like for you to, to purchase either at your local county extension office. You can go online and purchase the kit as well as some of your local uh, retail garden centers as well. So Carrie, what do we actually need if we want to go ahead and start to take our soil test? Well, it depends on what you have available. You definitely need your soil test kit, which will help you to take the soil test um, and to eventually submit it to our office. A soil test probe is great. I really like that a soil test probe indicates just how far you need to go down into the soil to take a proper soil test, but not everybody has a soil test probe. A lot of commercial companies will have this, but an average homeowner doesn't. So if I were to go in my garage or my shed, I could use my garden spade or even a, a garden trowel to actually take the physical test. Absolutely. And in taking one sample, sometimes you take a couple of soil collections in one area and then you need to mix it together for your final sample. And you can just do that in a nice clean bucket. Right. And so I don't want to be, I want to be sure that my tools haven't been around lime or fertilizer that may skew the test with residue on them. Right. And if they have been, just rinse them off and make sure that they're nice and Okay, so Tracy's taking her spade, and depending on the type of soil that you have, it's gonna be hard or it's gonna be relatively easy to go ahead and put into the ground. It also depends on the environmental conditions, whether it's dry or a little bit more moist. We're here in Northern Newcastle County, so we've got heavy clay, and Tracy's putting a lot of force behind the spade. Now she's just prying the earth back and forth so that she can take a nice slice of soil about four to six inches deep, because again, we are working with her. We're going to take that soil and just throw it into the bucket. Before you put it in, you want to remove any grass or organic matter. We're going to go ahead and break that up, put it in here. When you're doing a soil test, you're going to do this in eight to ten random areas in your yard. Okay, so we're going to do that. Now we're going to move to another location, do the same process again, and include it in the, in the bucket. Okay, it's important that when you have your samples in here to break this up, okay, you're gonna have more soil than you actually need for your test. But it's important that you break this up and then mix this really well together. 
Because what you're doing is taking, getting a good representation of the soil in your entire lawn. That's why we ask you to do the random samples. Once I've done this, I'm actually not gonna need all of this soil because you'll see that the size of the bag in the soil test kit is gonna equal about a cup of soil. So again, we don't need the entire bucket full per se, but we need enough to, that has been mixed very thoroughly without the organic matter. You may find a little bit of that, just take those out. There's a twig. And then I'm gonna, as once I have this nice and mixed well, then I'm gonna actually put, pour this into my soil bag. You need to remove any earthworms and nice, uh, this is a great sign of healthy soil. Mm -hmm. We don't want him. <laughs> but then I'm gonna go ahead and mix this really well. And I'm gonna take this and fill my soil bag. Okay. Okay. And this is really all we need. Okay. We'll put that in the bag to bring into the office. So when you when you finish your soil test and you've included that in here, um, you will also have a green sheet that you need to fill out. And all this does is give us your contact information. If you have email, be sure to include that. Um, number two says sample identification. You just need to write in here what you will remember where you took it. Like on my, another easy hint is sometimes if you don't have a bucket handy, you grab a clean zip, a Ziploc bag and put all your samples in. Again, mix really well. You've noticed I just labeled this back for my backyard and the date. And that's what you'll need to do here. Date sample, the depth, whether it's four to six, six to eight for a vegetable garden. Again, I would write back here. We also want to know what plants you want to grow. Um, if it's for an, an existing lawn, you would put that in there. Or if it's to start a new lawn, you would indicate that as well. It, fill out this form, submit it in with your soil sample. The other important thing to remember is you certainly can't do a soil test when the ground is frozen. Also, if we've had a lot of rain and the, and the, you can see that this soil is easy to break up. If it's really wet, we don't want to have that come in the off. It's important to let the soil dry a little bit and then take your sample because if not, it takes a very, very long time to dry out to even start the testing process. So Carrie, I've done all I need to do to collect my sample and I filled out my form and, and put that back in here. Now, what do I do with my soil test? Well, we already mentioned that you can purchase the soil tests at the county offices, but you can also go online to the Soil Testing Laboratory website and purchase a soil test. They'll ship it to you free of cost, and it's, again, $10. You can stop into the county offices, which are in Sussex, Kent, and Newcastle County. Visit us online for more information on where we're located. Um, you can drop off the soil samples when they're finished at our offices as well. And most of the offices have after-hours drop-off locations where you can just slide them into the um, office uh, without the office staff being there. So we make it as convenient as possible. Another thing that I'd like to mention is it usually takes about two to three weeks until your soil test results come back to you and they come back over mail or you can request by email. Okay. So if I don't want to, if I don't already have this kit, I could technically, if I know how to take that sample, do that and bring that in and fill this out in the local extension office. That's right. Mm -hmm. If that's where I want to purchase it. Great.